Spring 1991, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. A series of explosions rocks the mountain. U.S. volcanologists are working alongside Filipinos trying to figure out what's going on under the mountain. Using an instrument called a correlation spectrometer, the team measures the amount of sulfur dioxide, or SO2, coming out of the mountain. If magma, molten rock from deep within the Earth, is rising, SO2 and other gases should be escaping into the atmosphere through cracks in the rock above the magma chamber. The first measurements we got were about 500 tons a day, which is a pretty substantial amount of SO2 to come out. And that increased uh, with each successive measurement until by the end of the month it was 5,000 tons a day. It must be magma, and it must be magma rising up underneath the volcano. By early May, seven seismic stations surround the mountain. These transmit data by radio to a tiny room at Clark Air Force Base, thereafter known grandly as the Pinatubo Volcano Observatory, or PVO. The seismic stations record earthquakes five miles beneath the surface. Earthquakes this deep are a sign of more than a mountain just letting off steam. What was a little bit worrisome is that the locations of those earthquakes were spread over a wide area, um, some five or six kilometers in, in, in diameter. So the footprint of what was going on was big, and that was of concern to us. But is this mountain, which hasn't erupted in hundreds of years, really about to blow? High SO2 levels and seismic activity don't guarantee an eruption. It's not unusual for magma to rise for a while and then stop. And if an eruption is coming, how big will it be? You know, everybody wants to know, well, do we evacuate now? And it's, it's, an, it's an incredible sort of uh, weight to bear. People don't want probabilities. They want black and white. Yes, no, it's going to erupt, it's not. It's going to be big, it's, it's not. We should move, we shouldn't. It's, uh, that was, uh, for me, the, the worst part. The, you know, our normal background activity went from something like this to, to, to something like this. And in here, I, I just finished telling everybody that this thing was not as active as we thought it was, and here it was cranking out. And in about in here, where, where you can see all of this, the activity is, you know, getting, the earthquakes are getting bigger and bigger and more and more frequency, and the background noise is picking up. That's when I, I cracked. I just couldn't take it any longer. I called them again and said that this thing is really now cranking up. Um, and we, we need to be really concerned about this. And by the time somebody came over, it was now back down to background level again. There was an awful lot riding on our interpretations. That's coming up out of the ground. Uh, we've got a serious problem. Well, do you want us to keep flying around looking at it or? Uh, yeah, we got to make sure what it is. All right, we don't. We don't have to snuggle up real close to it. We'll take a look at it from uh, a little bit farther out. I can appreciate your braveness. We observed a dome. In other words, a little slug of magma, you know, cold, relatively cold magma squirting out on the ground. And when you see this domal structure, that's indicative of a kind of magma that's very explosive. So then suddenly the the equation changed dramatically, and we became very concerned. Yeah, Paul, that is true in the extreme. Well, it's currently forward. about 65, and I mean, uh, we just watched it go. Are we being evacuated? 48 hours after Clark is evacuated, Pinatubo erupts. All remaining personnel hastily retreat to the far side of the base. Came yeah. straight up, yeah, about this fast. Yeah. Was there, did you hear any sound or anything? You know, people after the, after the first eruption would come and say, was that the big one, was that the big one? It was like, no, 
I don't, I don't think that was a big one. That was uh, like a throat clearing thing or, you know, a vent clearing phase. You know, we knew that June 12th wasn't the, the big guy. That was just the, uh, the volcano saying, OK, I'm going to do it. I'm ready. And this is, you know, these are appetizers. On the 15th, Pinatubo serves up the main course. From 2 a.m. on, there is a continuous eruption punctuated by massive explosions that send ash 100,000 feet into the air. At daybreak, when the eruption becomes visible, it appears to be over 10 miles wide. Pyroclastic flows roar down from the summit in all directions. Even from 15 miles away, these flows overwhelm the horizon. The 6 a.m. explosion is the fifth of the morning. It is large enough to create lightning as part of its own weather system. Thanks to the prediction, virtually everyone within 15 miles of Pinatubo was evacuated before the cataclysmic eruption. While tens of thousands of Filipinos suffer in the aftermath of Pinatubo, the evacuation has kept the death toll to under 500. now recognized as the largest volcanic eruption in 80 years.